How about now? Man, I spent this whole time talking to myself. Um, well, let's start over. Muster up where you're from, what, you, what you're munching on. Uh, Make two Sith from the locals chat. He's working the riverboat tonight. Are you like police? Are you like marine police or uh, small boat police or something? Fireworks, huh? That's good stuff. Ian, thank you for tuning in. Glad you liked the intro. Josh and Bama, thank you so much for that that ten dollar locals tip, bro. I didn't even know you could do that on locals. <laughs> Another Brandon Fiber for you and L Dub snacks for upcoming Falcon Heavy launches. Hell yeah, man! I got that email from SpaceX. Looking forward to uh, those those Falcon Heavy launches. It's been way too long. No drink for Ian. Well, that's sad. You got my you got my audio now. Audio check one two three. We're less than one minute from launch. This is a Intel Sat launch two telecommunication satellites, Galaxy thirty three, Galaxy thirty four. All right. This is a record tying fourteenth launch for this booster. You can see it's a little sooty. She's a sooty dirty girl. All right. That's how we like them. We're gonna turn the volume up. Meow. Ah, maybe. T minus thirty seconds. So these evening launches are like the best when the sun's rays are scattering in the upper regions of the atmosphere. It should make some for some pretty colorful views. All right, it should be pretty awesome. It would have been even better yeah, last night seconds. because it was a little bit later than it, what, what it is right now, but it still hey, should be pretty 10, cool to watch. Nine, Here we eight, go. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, ignition. And lift off of Falcon 9. Go Falcon, go Intel Sat Galaxy 33 and 34. Love it. Fire! Oh, Did you down range? Hands up in the chat if you tuned in with us last night for the uh, the first attempt. It was no, it was two nights ago. They were gonna do it again last night, but they didn't even really go for it. Two nights ago, when we actually did the stream. That was a beautiful cloud. T plus you see that beautiful Indian cloud, guys? Falcon 9 successfully lifting off from Pad 40 at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, carrying Intel Power Sats Galaxy 33 and 34 satellites to orbit. Now, during ascent, we have begun tilting the engine, that's technically called gimbling, and we've begun what's called a gravity turn. So we're beginning to move the rocket horizontally. We're still going up, but we're also going horizontally out Falcon over the Atlantic. Supersonic. Now at this point, we're just a few seconds away for maximum dynamic pressure, max Q, right after we get supersonic. Max Q. With that, we are at the through the highest point of stresses as we're going up through the Earth's atmosphere. Now, going back to what I was saying about going horizontally, a rocket needs to go about 17,500 miles per hour to get into orbit. So our velocity is gonna keep ticking up. You can see that on the left-hand side of your screen to take these satellites to their uh, ultimate orbit orbital destination. Coming up, we've got three events in quick succession. First of those will be MECO, that's main engine cutoff. This is where we shut down all nine of the Merlin 1D engines on the first stage. Following that, we'll have stage separation. The first and second stages will separate. And then we'll have second engine start number one, SES-1. That's where we'll ignite the Merlin vacuum engine okay, on the second stage. So again, three events happening back to back. Miko, stage separation, there it is. one Those will Isn't happen awesome? about 20 seconds Pretty from now. Pretty colors. Beautiful. It'd be even better if you were actually there to watch this stage step. This is going to be sweet. I hope they keep the ground tracking camera. They probably won't. Great but shots from the ground. Awesome. You can see as the uh, atmosphere is getting less dense, the plume expanding behind the rocket. Hi, Pepe. Hi, Pepe. Oh, no. Damn overcast. Ruining the show. Miko. Where are we at, cameraman? Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. There we go, those three events back to back. So with that, the first stage will start making its way back to planet Earth for recovery. Our second stage has a pretty long burn to go. There it is. Next major milestone here will be yeah, coming cool. up at about T plus three and a half minutes. That'll be fairing deployment. Now, both of these fairings, oh, that's a great shot. You can see the first stage, I believe, on the right, and the second stage on the left. 
those poofers you see on that first stage on the right here that's the the cold and nitrogen periodic, gas uh, thrusters you're seeing there from the first stage attitude control system helping reorient it get the heat shields down let's see if we'll also get to see fairings yep we can see them. confirmed left hand side of your screen those two white blobs coming off of uh, the second stage are fairings Mokes making These burgers. fairings have flown mm. five times each. We will be attempting to retrieve them today and use them on a future mission. I need to eat my den din yet. I'm thinking chicken. Chicken. So these are the fairings that he was just talking about. He said they flew five times and they're worth six million dollars, three million dollars for each half. Just continue on nominal trajectories. So they'll shoot those down, brah. We're about T plus four minutes drink. into today's mission. Had a successful liftoff just four minutes ago. We're in the first of two planned Merlin There's vacuum burns for satellite deployment. Right there. Left hand side of your screen is Falcon 9's first stage. We've got a view looking down towards the engines. You can see that the grid fins have deployed in preparation for atmospheric reentry. On the right hand side of your screen, a great shot of the Merlin vacuum engine glowing brightly with planet Earth in the background and some sunlight behind. Oh, yeah, dude. So you can see the the frost here on the inner stage of the first stage of the rocket. The inner stage is just the part, the top of the first stage of the rocket that houses the vacuum engine that you see on the right there when the two stages are connected. But like you were saying, the camera's looking down that booster and you see these grid fins. I call them the fly swatters. They're about the size of a, a compact vehicle, a compact car, and those will help steer the booster to the drone ship that you're seeing right now. Check that out, dude. I told you these evening launches are freaking sweet. I'm scaring my dog. You're okay, peepers. We'll go to doggo cam here in a second. Isn't that awesome? So I love evening launches. This can also happen in the early morning as well, but evening's the best. And, and when they launched from Vandenberg, it was a couple years ago, they'd launched from Vandenberg in the evening and people on the freeway were getting accidents, car accidents. Uh, because they were seeing this in the sky and, and people were calling like 911 because they thought aliens were invading. <laughs> so, I mean, the accident thing isn't fine. I don't think anyone was hurt or at least seriously hurt, but I mean, you can, you can find those videos if you really look for them. It's just really cool to see that ha happening on the skyline. So yeah, these grid fins will help steer the first stage booster toward that drone ship once it enters the denser parts of the atmosphere. Kind of like putting your hand outside of a moving car window. You can do the wave. That's the same kind of physics there. And then in the meantime, though, you'll see those poofers from the attitude control system, uh, the nitrogen gas that they poof out, kind of like uh, Wally in, in that Disney movie using the fire extinguisher to kind of push himself toward the lady robot, Newton's third law. And then on the right-hand side of your screen is that Merlin vacuum engine continuing to push those two telecommunication satellites to orbit. We'll turn the volume back up, meow. We're about to do the first entry burn. You see right down here, if I can find my cursor, there it is. First entry burn, they'll uh, light up a few of those first stage sea level uh, Merlin engines. They just did it. And uh, that will slow the booster down as it comes into the thicker parts of the atmosphere so it doesn't slam into it and destroy the booster. And that's what makes these, these boosters so sooty is this right here because it's flying through its own plume, its own soot, its own dirt, its own exhaust. And then that will shut down and they'll do one more relight of just the center Merlin sea level engine of that Falcon 9 booster. And uh, that will land it on the drone ship. And they can get away with that with just using one booster because fuel is what weighs the most with these, um, with these rockets. And I did try looking into it after I made this comment a few launches ago. I couldn't find an exact percentage weight wise of how much the fuel takes up of the, the overall weight, um, the wet weight. I think it's like, like, I think it's over 90%. I think it was like 95%. Now I can't, I don't know if that's fact, fact, but that's just what I found on the internets, All right? I did some digging and that's the best I could find. So don't take it as gold, take it as, I don't know, hearsay or something. But uh, that's the reason that one sea level Merlin engine can get away with lighting and landing these giant boosters, these 70 meter tall boosters on the drone ships because there's basically no fuel left in just a little bit of fuel. Looks like that's the drone ship right there, maybe, that little light. As we're getting through the thicker parts of the Earth's atmosphere, next major milestone for the first stage will be its landing burn. Just a single Merlin engine will ignite, followed by landing leg deploy. H2, FTS has safe. And hopefully a soft touchdown. What's going on, Trinity Waters? Good to see you again. Thanks for joining us on the Rumbills.
You guys picked a good Lindenburg. night to tune in, man. I told you these evening launches are freaking sweet, bro. And I went to start. Sweet landing. You just Let's heard the call out there for second engine cutoff on the second stage. Oh, yeah. Keep the shot. Keep the shot. That stage water's one, looking very deploy. blue. Yes. Yes. Ease it in. Ease it stage in. Stage one landing yes. is confirmed. Please clap. Awesome. Successful Stage landing on our drone ship about six, signal, cape. 600 kilometers off the coast of Florida. You also heard in there the second engine cutoff on our second stage. So just handling them in order here. 146th recovery for an orbital class rocket, including first stage landings for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. Second stage completed its burn. It's in the nominal orbit, but the mission isn't over just yet. It's embark the second stage is going to embark on its first coast phase. Got a little jumpy During on that music. Following that coast phase, we are going to light the Merlin vacuum engine for a second time. That'll happen about 26 minutes into the mission. So we're going to see you back here in about 17 minutes. In the meantime, enjoy the space tunes. Enjoy this awesome view of Falcon 9 and the space jellyfish. We will not enjoy the tunes. Will not. Cool. How'd you guys like the show, bra? Was it was it as good for you as it was for me? I like I liked it quite a bit. Let's just say I can't stand up right now. I remember when they didn't show any telemetry on the booster, only on the second stage while the booster landed. Yep. I remember when they were uh, were blowing up rockets like. <laughs> right when they came off the launch pad. The good old Falcon 1 days. Of course, I didn't watch those live. Appreciate you guys clapping in the locals chat. That's funny. Man, like, I've never seen a launch in person, right? But if I were, if I could pick, like, the ideal situation, it would be Starship, a Starship Super Heavy launch, in the evening about this time so you could see you could see that big ass rocket lift off and then you could see the if you thought that plume was big and, the, and even like whatever you call it the separation plume that you saw when the when we had stage step think how massive that thing's gonna be when starship does a stage step man holy cow i i ah i can't wait for the future dude i can't wait i mean i'm kind of forced to wait but i can't wait all right need to build me that time machine let's go to doggo cam really quick and see if we can get the doggos in front of the cam who's that of course i got my uh get up i got my co-hosts i got wilson and jeb and we gotta do our, our our jeb go get jeb get him get him jebediah kerman the kerbal from kerbin they took our jeb they took your jeb they took your jeb I'm actually waiting for Peeps to, he loves stuffed animals, man. I'm waiting for him to actually pick up Jeb and just run off with him. Then that little sound bite will make more sense. Kunu had a busy day of chilling outside in the grass, so I think he's mad at me for making him come in. He won't be joining us, I guess. A 33 Raptor plume will be amazing. Yes, it will right after it destroys the launch pad. <laughs> oh my gosh. 33 engine static fire. That's coming up. Oh my gosh, man. Can you imagine? Texas will no longer be on the map. They're gonna blow up Texas, Texas. What's going on, Wayne Jockey? Good to see you, dude. Yeah, the space jellyfish. That's what they call that big old plume. Space jellyfish. Well, I'm going to call it there, you guys. You got probably like another 10 to 15 minutes before uh, they show the deployment of those Intel satellites. There's a link in the description that will take you right there. If you're into that, I'm going to go enjoy my weekend. I hope you enjoy yours. All right. Hope it's going well. Don't do anything I would do. And until next time, Godspeed.